what is actually going to happen if I pair my AMD Ryzen CPU with DDR4 4000 MHz memory. Will I still be able to boot? Will the system immediately crash or freeze in between? Or will I be able to squeeze even more performance out of such a Ryzen processor that way? For today's experiment, not really surprising, I'm going with the Ryzen 9 5950X of my test system and will pair it with some pretty fast RAM by PNY. In fact, we're dealing with their gaming brand named XLR8, or probably how it's supposed to be pronounced, XLR8. The model, Epic X RGB, 16 gigabytes of it, coming in at an intended max clock speed of 4000 MHz at CL18 timings. Furthermore, I've added a little additional experiment to today's test. How does 4000 MHz RAM at CL18 timings compare in terms of performance against lower clocked 3200 MHz but with tighter CL14 timings? Will this balance things out or do we always need to get higher clocked memory in order to get the most out of our Ryzen CPUs? All these questions we'll try to deal with in this video. I will not dive deep into these topics though, since there are plenty of other, maybe even better videos out there. Now before we fire up the machine and hope for this system to post, a few sentences about this PNY Accelerate Epic X RGB RAM. We are obviously looking at a dual channel kit. Those 16GB are divided into two 8GB modules. The clock speed, as said, is at 4000 MHz and the exact timings, the cast latency being CL18 22 22 42. The kit is supposed to operate at 1.35V. Needless to say, these days decent RGB lighting cannot be missing anymore. In terms of aesthetics and build quality, PNY with their Epic X RGB modules definitely manages to impress. And yes, these modules are fully compatible with standard mainstream RGB implementations of our motherboards. I did test that. Of course, the manufacturer went with metal for the heat spreaders. After all, plastic is something we sometimes do tend to come across too, from time to time, depending on the manufacturer and model. DDR4 doesn't exactly run hot, that's why. So there's the question, what is cheaper now? 4000 MHz with looser timings or maybe 3200 MHz with tight timings, as seen on my usual G-Skill Flare X kit. At the time of this video, the aggressively clocked PNY memory goes for like roughly 120 to 140 US dollars. A 3200 MHz memory kit with CL14 timings on the other hand would set you back about 110 to 130, which is slightly cheaper, but barely. What's going to deliver us better performance and more FPS at the end of the day. And this leads us to the next point. According to the specifications, Ryzen 5000, specifically the 5950X CPU in my case, only up to 3200 MHz are natively being supported. Anything beyond that, officially speaking, is an overclock. And stability or even being able to successfully boot certainly is not guaranteed anymore. Depending on the motherboard and CPU, or rather CPU generation, or actually the memory controller, more often than not, you're getting away with it fairly well. Although it needs to be said that anything older that predates Ryzen 5000 is going to handle high frequency memory significantly worse or not at all. While AMD certainly has improved memory compatibility from generation to generation, the predecessor of today's 5950X, namely the 3950X, may or may not get even close to what the 5950X is capable of handling when it comes to memory frequency. However, it also depends on what DRAM manufacturer is actually behind your memory kits. Popular choices for instance are Micron, SK Hynix and very well received Samsung DRAM. Depending on the platform, we could experience different behaviors and results. In the case of today's Epic X RGB memory, we are talking of SK Hynix DRAM. I've had no bad experiences with that one in the past. Very well, enough beating around the bush, it's time to insert these modules into the slots of my trusty ASRock X570PG Velocita motherboard and then we'll try to enable the XMP profile within the BIOS. Not really surprising, the very first boot up 
goes without any issues, since the clock speed automatically gets set to the lowest 2133 MHz to start with. So now it's about time to load the XMP profile. The voltage is also automatically set. All we need to do now is to save the settings and hope. What do you think? Will my Ryzen platform be able to handle the RAM on the very first try? The answer is yes, it can handle it. Quite frankly, I personally had a feeling it wasn't going to work. Luckily for me, I was totally wrong. The 4000 MHz have been successfully applied and same goes for the timings. However, we should probably not rejoice too early, because booting successfully into the BIOS doesn't necessarily mean the memory kit with these aggressive settings is going to run fully stable in Windows under all kinds of loads, such as rendering or gaming. I will not drag this out for you any longer though, let me tell you, it works. Stable. I've run a whole bunch of different stress tests as well as normal benchmarks, nothing ever crashed or froze, it's all running as intended. But what about performance? I will put today's PNY Accelerate RAM up against my fastest kit I own, namely the G-Skill Flare X at 3200 MHz with timings of CL14. For a bit of a reference, I've additionally also added my G-Skill memory downclocked to only a mere 2666 MHz at CL16 timings to the list. After all, these happen to be the specs most tend to go when wanting to save money on the RAM, at least that's what I've heard. Now here are the benchmarks, albeit not a whole lot of them. Enjoy! Other than many may or may not have expected, no, memory doesn't lead to immense differences in performance as it's the case with CPUs and GPUs. While there certainly are a few scenarios where that would be the case, I obviously couldn't test everything today. But generally speaking, the results with different RAM mostly are negligible. But please be careful not to generalize that, because surprise surprise, a few factors need to be taken into consideration. In my case, for instance, the DRAM manufacturer. Coming from my experience, I couldn't help but notice Ryzen loves good Samsung DRAM, and that's what comes into play with that G-Skill Flare X kit. This is also a reason why those 2666 MHz at CL 16 timings still performed fairly well. Nonetheless, I would like to point out a few small performance differences. When rendering the clock speed when going along with normal decent timings, there's not really a noticeable impact. But it surely needs to be said that a lower memory clock along with looser timings does affect the single core performance. This in turn affects certain game titles depending on their focus on single core performance in-game. Most of the time, the average frame rate barely is affected, plus minus a few FPS more or less when paired with an RTX 3090 graphics card isn't really that big of a deal. It's a whole lot more common to find the minimum FPS of course, that also greatly differs from game to game. Still, we start seeing a pattern. And such can also be witnessed with tight timings. While not really a big deal, the g scale memory with only 3200 MHz manages to slightly come out on top of those crazy 4000 MHz that PNY RAM is offering, all thanks to CL14. 
Nevertheless, I'm impressed by how much a raw clock speed of 4000 MHz is capable of catching up. Today's PNY Accelerate Epic X RGB RAM certainly is a great performer, no doubts. But we also have proof it's not always the memory frequency that matters. In theory, I'd now have to dive into another topic, that is the FCLK ratio, but that would go beyond the scope of today's video. Still, I hope you enjoyed this slightly different one by me. With that being said, thanks a lot for watching and until next time.